I, I'm fascinated by, like I'm so positive that America's in deep shit. Like nothing is more obvious to me than when you create entitlement, it's all over. As a matter of fact, let's be, let's talk about transparency. The great vulnerability of VaynerMedia in its nine years was two, three years ago when I had to wake up and say, fuck, I care about feelings and culture and empathy so much, I've quietly created entitlement here where merit isn't put on a pedestal, where being kind is, but you kind of suck at your job, and I have a lot of work to do over the next three years to fix this. But when it comes to sports, and especially when you're a kid, I mean, being a mom that watched my kids in all yes. the different sports, and yes, if you get fourth place and fifth, whatever place, it's it's a little bit of a confidence builder. It's like, okay. I'm out of here. Okay. I'm, Bobby. You have to. Bobby. There's some, like, you know, chubby fat kid who's, like, barely who needs, making. Who needs to understand, <laughs> yo, chubby fat kid, you're not going to be a professional <laughs> fucking athlete. Go be a great you're fucking third architect. Grade. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> You're in hey, grade. Artie the fat ass, you're gonna be a great chef, but get the fuck off the football field, you suck. But I just think everyone's good at something. That's right, so get off the fucking football field, but guess what, Mommy Bobby over here's tricking you <laughs> and making you think you might be okay. No. Yes, I, I, no. yes, no, no. yes. Is his microphone louder than mine, or does he just talk louder? I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm fucking pissed out here. <laughs> like, you're a fucking gangster winner, <laughs> and you, this, is why, this is what I'm worried about. There's a reason that people are struggling mentally, and I'm telling you, everybody wants to blame social media, it's bullshit. It's parents creating fake environments for children. We're, we're building zoo animals. These fucking kids are zoo animals. Explain that, zoo animals. That we're watching them? Like, what does that mean? It means when you take a tiger from the Bronx Zoo and yeah. you put it in the actual jungle, he fucking or she dies in one second because they've not grown up in the actual environment. You take kids who fucking think they're good at baseball because in Montclair up until fucking 12th grade, everybody's fucking good and then you actually go and play baseball and you get fucking struck out 900 times in a row. But you go back to your dorm room and start doing fucking cocaine. Oh, come on, Gary. It doesn't work like that. That's exactly it. It does not. My Whoa, l listen, I, listen. <laughs> you look at the kids' faces. Did they're you all... play baseball? No. no. Football, okay. He did fucking cocaine. But you knew at one point, you're like, okay, this was really cool and fun. All right, this isn't going to work. No, because mommy tricked me because we had fucking uh, like su Sundays after losing 31 to nothing, but we made pretend we didn't keep score. Guess what? What? No. If, if you're not good at football and you love the sport, so go work for the team. Like there's ways okay, to take you your keep passion. Keep, keep building. No, keep but building. it's true. I mean, I watched my kids. I had a, I had a, you know, a pro golfer. I had, you know, I had guys, kids that were good at different things, and then they weren't anymore. You know, they entered high school. You know, they were on traveling soccer and baseball their entire careers until they went to high school. They realized they're not going to make it, That's and right. they didn't. So That's they right. moved on. That's fine. And you listen, know? a lot of people don't move on. Yeah. And and creating fake environments is an issue that needs to be talked about much more. And I think you should create a fake environment school. But the 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 fourth place and the eighth place kid, you don't know what you're going to encourage him. So maybe the next season he'll be in third place. You like may. there's ways to get no, up. No, no, no. Yeah. Fake environments don't be don't doesn't mean like mean. It means just don't create delusion. I mean, look, I and I teach and I empower young entrepreneurs, yes. girls, makeup artists yes. that come to me, and everyone and their uncle now, besides having yes. a media platform yes. and a podcast. Yes. Want, has a makeup line. That's right. Everybody. So you know, I'm I I give everyone advice, right. and the advice is, be different, have a point of difference, and every day of your Bobby, fucking life, a, you have to work Bobby, really, really on hard. On a very serious note, like straight no bullshit. This is going to be the best part of the podcast. What percentage of the people that you meet that tell you they're going to start a makeup line? Do you? This is one woman's yeah. point of view. You may be wrong. You may be right. I'm just curious. What percentage do you think will actually have a successful business that you know? whether it has an exit or it pays for their livelihood, like a true successful business? Well, I think it's very low, for sure. It's very low. But what is success? I mean, when I left, it was a billion dollars. That is not normal. No, no, no. That's success not normal. Success to me is they get to do it. Right. And they can, like, live their life. Right. As a matter of fact, the number one thing I'm trying to, like, and I, I, I know my team is seeing me start to go in this direction, I'm starting to get interested about expenses, not how much you make. My big thing is that success is if you want it to be the eyeshadow king or queen, like that's a great life. You like you love eyeshadow. You want to live forever being doing this eyeshadow thing. By the way, I think you could make a hundred nine thousand dollars a year in profit and actually be a success. Well, I believe in profit. Number one, I don't believe in you investments. Heard, right? You heard what I said. Yep. If you make a hundred nine thousand dollars in profit by creating an eyeshadow and selling it on Shopify and eBay, 
and you live in a household and and your expenses equal 88,000 for the year, you're gonna win. The problem is everybody wants a fucking BMW and everybody fucking wants to buy $8,000 handbags and everybody fucking lives on credit and overextends themselves and over You know why you and I like profit? Because we know that the next economic downturn, all these businesses that everybody thinks are doing well are gonna go out of business. Well, I have so many of my friends that are like wanting to hand me millions of dollars, they're venture guys, yes. to start new businesses. And I'm like, no, I don't, of first of all, I don't, you know, besides it, I think it's ridiculous to spend more money than you have. Bobby, of course they wanna give you money. Their lives are about raising capital, taking a percentage of it, and then giving it to people that actually do shit. And then I, and one of them told me I never even have to worry about making a profit. And I'm like, I, that's all I know how to do is make profits. I wanna kill everybody. No, you don't. No. You're positive. I must, like, I'm like a business athlete. When I say I wanna kill everybody, I'm like the athlete that plays on the field and I wanna do everything dirty and get away with it to win the game, right? As soon as the game's over, I wanna shake your hand and tell you, ask you how your wife's doing and like, like donate to your charity. But on the field, I wanna kill everybody. And so I think that is something I need to create more clarity of. A lot of the alpha competitive, I wanna destroy everybody's face, that's kind of business. That's like when I'm in the game. You're like that. Oh, 100%. When a, when, back in the day, when a buyer didn't buy something, you walked out and you're like, I'm gonna fucking kill her. No, I would just say, why? Tell me why. And I'd say, let me tell you why I think it's so good. And they'd, they'd say, okay. And when she was but still I'm a still, meal and made I'm, a big mistake, right. you'd walk out and be like, I'm gonna destroy Karen. Right, but you know I'm still in the game. I know you're yeah, still in the I game. Yeah, I still have a couple businesses that are about to blow up. I feel like you're, I can't I wait feel to like tell you're you. rising like a phoenix. A phoenix? Yeah. That's no, what I feel no, is going on Well, here. first of all, I think being um, on your show that one time was like, Oh my God, all these like random people that I've haven't talked to or seen in years are like, oh my God, you know Gary Vee? I want to, you know how many people want an introduction, which I have never once said. Well, only once, just an intern, I know. But that was about it. I'm so flattered when I hear this shit. Like, uh, it's, I really wish people could feel flattered more often. I, you know, I'm very good at giving compliments. I, I like razzing my teammates out of love, but I, I love giving compliments because it's so nice. Why can't we make that more cool? Like, that's a cool new agenda. That might be the best part of this. We need to get back, I love it. I'm so funny at it. Like, right now, like I love telling people like, I'm, like I love your yellow coat, like at the airport, and people like freak out. It's like the <laughs> nicest thing. Or just like looking I, at people and smiling. Like, I always we tell need women to make they're positivity pretty. louder. What? I always stop women, I say, oh my God, you're so pretty. That's and they so, look at me, if, I'm like, well, I'm Bobby Brown. I'm, it's like, I'm not trying to pick you up. Yeah, you know? if I, you know, like, I like I, I do it to dudes. Like obviously, like you need to be careful and like even not in this political climate, you always want to be respectful. It's not even careful. That's the wrong word. But I love doing it to dudes. I love telling Tyler when he has a good haircut, which by the way I've never done, which means he's <laughs> never had a good haircut. But we're still hoping. Oh, I just think it's so crazy, Tyler. I knew him when he was a little kid. It's I know, just we're crazy so proud to see. Him, right? it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, he's gonna be something. Uh, he he really is. You know what's funny? Tyler is very motivating for me because when he came to me, you know. He, AJ and him, they, you know, but like watching, and this, by the way, this is a joke on Tyler, but this is every admin assistant, every team member, watching people realize they can do so much more is one of the most intoxicating things for me of being a manager. I don't think people realize how much shit they can fit in a day. But did you, you didn't just hire him to be your second in command. Tyler like was you hired him. through an introduction from a great guy, Mickey Cloud, who runs our Chattanooga office. And he was, back then we were doing a lot of community management. You would reply on Twitter as a brand. Then AJ needed an admin. And you know, Tyler's so, you know Tyler. Like again, he's a dope, but he's so charismatic, <laughs> he wins. So he's so charismatic. So somehow it hits AJ's radar. So he's interested. The best story of all time, and Tyler knows where I'm about to go. Tyler's day one, this is real. Day one, Tyler is my brother's admin, which means he's in his inbox. We get an email from the New York Jets, which is a client, which you can imagine I'm so in love with. And literally the email says, hey AJ, I'd like to schedule a call. I'd like to request Tyler Schmidt be removed from the Jets account. Ah, uh, why? Because he stinks, guys, uh -huh. he's a dope. I've been trying <laughs> to tell you. The same reason I got D's and F's. You got players in positions to succeed. If you are an entrepreneur, you run a business, or you're a manager, you work for everybody else, and your number one job in the world is to put other people in a, pl in a place to succeed predicated on their skills and passion overlay. But I think the most important thing for all of us dopes that didn't get good grades in yes. school is to figure out what we're not good at and try to work around it. Couldn't Either get agree more. someone else to do Couldn't it. Couldn't agree more. I never learned how to type, and I've written nine books. I'm, listen, so, I'm, I mean, there's so many of those things. 
I'm, I'm the greatest fucking public speaker in the world and if you asked me to read this in front of this room, I would shiver like, like I can't read. You could, you just choose not to. Like, yes. Do you, wait, do you read books? No. No. I've written more books than I've read. So are you ADD or OCD? Probably. I'm both. I mean, I I'm self-diagnosed. I, I have no interest in letting anybody <laughs> arbitrarily like diagnose me. They can keep that in their pocket. I'm me. I'm intuitive to like what makes me happy and I keep trying to become a better version of that every day and then I try to over articulate that so that it might impact somebody else because there is nothing that feels better than admiration. You get home at 11.30 every night. I got home at 12.37 last night. When do you see your children? I know Weekends, you, yeah, seven okay. weeks vacation. Like I'm absolutely not living a politically correct like to everybody's work-life balance standpoint, but I'm also unbelievably unfazed by it because I'm in a depth versus width conversation in my life. And I'm also in, this is this moment right now, and I'm always in a place of understanding what will I regret, how will I roll, and most importantly, it's interesting, Lizzie got me a plaque that said, you know, my father taught me how to live by living, you know, and, and I think a lot about that. I think a, I think a lot about like what check boxes do I want to check and for whom? Nice. Guys, everybody listening to this podcast, <laughs> bad always loses. Promise. We've been around a long fucking time. It doesn't feel like that way. I promise. But sometimes Can't we wait. have to wait a long time, like yes. eight years, sure. four years. Sure, six. You know, yeah. there's all sorts of numbers. Yeah.